Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. I feel like I went 70, you went 30 on that one. With the cheers clink? I feel like I had to really stretch it to get to you. Oh, well, <laughs> you didn't you're go a giver. Well. I'm a taker. Oh, no. It happens. Why don't you say it out loud? <laughs> well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today, Rachel, all this March Madness buzz, which you know me, I can't get enough Just. of the madness in March. It's got us feeling a little competitive, so we're going to do our own version. Yeah, we're going to do a financial bracket for March Madness. Take that, sports. We're going to talk about the most predatory products out there on the financial market. With brackets. With brackets. That makes it sports We're so sportsy. <laughs> it's so <laughs> great. <laughs> It's gonna be it's gonna be really fun, George. I'm very excited about it, and we're also gonna test some of our knowledge when it comes to sports. Please don't. We are. We're gonna dive. We're gonna dive right in. And I'm gonna be talking college sports, which is something I've been legally told not to do. <laughs> so tune in for that alone. And you said when we sat down that you have your what kind of jacket on, George? This is my varsity jacket <laughs> from when I played intramural football. I did one game in college, and. Uh, <laughs> No joke. Hey, I, the jacket's not from that game. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> but I did play an intramural game of flag football. Yeah, and what happened? I, what college did you you went? University of Mobile. Yeah. We don't even have a football team. Pretty sure we have like a sword what drill sport team. Did you play? I did not. I'm sorry. What position did you play on the field? I'm not sure in flag football intramural there really was positions. There, there is at the University of Tennessee. They take it very seriously. The <laughs> I wish they took their college football <laughs> seriously. Oh, you little. Roasted. They'll put sunglasses on me and post. Um, yeah, so what happened was I ran so fast <laughs> that my body flung forward. Oh, my and gosh. And I tripped the guy in front of me. He flipped over on top of me and his cleat landed in my armpit and it was borderline bleeding. I was sore for weeks and I never played again. (laughs) It was my one injury. I could have gone pro and that one injury took me out. Never got to sign a contract. (laughs) No, is it? It's my cross to bear. That is the But I got this varsity jacket from that. Okay. It was worth it. Oh my gosh. And we're going to sip on this actually lovely mocktail. It's a grapefruit it's really jalapeno good. mocktail. And I got to say, this is maybe top three mocktails we've had. Mm-hmm. So we're going to give it a it's rating really at the end, reveal the cost per glass, and of course the recipe in the show notes. So stick around to the end for that. So I know you're an avid football player, obviously. Obvi. We're not talking football, though. Uh, no, I'm tr- that's my transition line, Oh, well, George. Handball. What? No, my transition line. <laughs> Stop it. Here. Sorry, go again. Sorry, let me take two. George, so obviously you're a football player at heart, but are you a basketball fan? I did play basketball in elementary school. You did? And maybe middle school. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a fan of like just college basketball, like with March Madness? Um, I would say we had the Celtics in Boston, so I was more pro than okay. I was college. You're one of those, yeah. Our college teams were terrible. Okay. Like Boston College, probably the best we have for, Okay. I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, how about you? Uh, not a big basketball fan. Can I be honest? It's the squeaking for me. Oh, is it? The squeaking. Squeaking. It bothers me. I don't know if I have sensory issues, but yeah. it's so, you're mostly just listening to squeaking when you're watching basketball. Yeah. Can I say this? As someone that has never played basketball, football, I watch and I see like, oh, absolutely. There are plays. They are being intentional. That wide receiver <laughs> is going that way because the coach told him to. All this basketball. They say there's plays. But it's they a little chaos. It looks like they're just running around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you agree? The strategy is get just, the ball I in the hoop. I just always wonder. Oh. <laughs> I just always wonder, are they really? It's like if you're blocked, Like the coach try to has pass a clipboard it. and I'm like, what is he really telling them? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, you just got to run the court, right? I just don't get it. And I married into a basketball family. Winston's brother played for college. Winston oh, wow. played all the way through. Yeah. Winston big, was a college baller? But, no, his, bro- well, his brother played. Holy Cross up in Bo- close to Holy Boston. Holy Cross. I didn't know he played for Holy Cross. He played for Holy Cross, yeah. Wow. And Winston, yeah, played all through college. He got he got offered some stuff, but he did turn them down. Uh, That's his Winston. His dad played. His grandfather played at UT. Like, they're wow. big basketball people. And I married into this family. I know nothing. I know nothing about basketball. I don't get it. So we're okay. So they're big into it. So they do March Madness. And our family trip with the cruises usually overlaps spring break. 
So there was always brackets. I mean, they were just so hardcore. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't have a, I'm not a big basketball fan. Well, I don't know. lucky for you, we're talking about money in this episode, but we're going to test my college sports knowledge. Okay, so we're going to do a little assessment, George. We're going to give the team name, and we have to say the school. And okay. And unfortunately, this is going to be rough. <laughs> this is not going to be good. It's going to be rough. Uh, okay, but if I said, like, the volunteers, we would say Tennessee. Tennessee volunteers. All right, here we go. Go Vols. George, Cyclones. Okay, Cyclones, that has to do with tornadoes. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Oklahoma. Kansas. I'm going to go University of Kansas. I'm going to go the Oak. <laughs> O K U. The correct answer is Iowa State. Oh man, I thought <laughs> Iowa for a hot second. Dang, the they Cougars. got there. Cougars. Cougars. Uh, Cougars are native to not America. I feel like so. I'm gonna go <laughs> Texas. Texas Tech. No, definitely not. <laughs> Texas Tech. The Cougars. Um, <laughs> it feels like a um, Virginia. Classic Virginia <laughs> <Universe>. Cougars. <laughs> hey, you're close with Texas. It's huh? Houston. Oh, okay, George actually. All right, I'm that. closer. Shoot, the boiler makers. <laughs> okay, I feel like where do um, they boil things? <laughs> Who makes a boiler? I want to say Pittsburgh. It feels like a real. Oh, that's a great one. University of Pittsburgh boiler makers. Shoot, that's a really good one. Um, <laughs> what are you going with? I was thinking more like the Great Lakes. <laughs> like a Michigan? Or? We're going to go like a Wisconsin. <laughs> right. This is my school. It's Purdue. Oh. Where is Purdue? Ohio? Purdue is in Indiana. <laughs> close enough. Guys, they- I was closer. I was closer. Border each other. Geographically. The Blue Devils. On, um, one of the Carolinas. Blue Devils. I'm going to go- North Carolina. South Carolina. UNC. Duke. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't even get that. Didn't Michael Jordan play Tar for Heels. UNC? Tar Heels is uh, North Carolina. That's where he, he was a Tar yep. Heel? Yep. Uh, baby Blue Colors. Do I get extra Tar Heel was UNC. For colors? I was You're right correct. on. Yeah. I was just one behind. It's North Carolina, it's Tar Heels. Okay. <gasps> Jayhawks, Kansas. That was my brother in law. Dang it. You got there first. You win that. <laughs> oh, one. sorry. I'm jumping ahead. I, I'm not, I didn't know we should be I looking know. ahead to I know. cheat. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Huskies, Washington. Okay. What do you think? He felt very confident. Washington. Connecticut. Oh! <laughs> Got you. I knew that. Honestly. <laughs> the Badgers. I've heard of them. Washington. Um. That's a Washington. <laughs> Washington Badgers. No, the Badgers are like. Um, Go Badgers. Is that a Wisconsin Go Badger. thing? Yeah, it feels like a, it. like a, like a it's Minnesota. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Wait, Wisconsin. All right, final answer is what? Wisconsin. I'm going Wisconsin. Wisconsin's correct. Because okay. <laughs> when I said Man. go Badgers. Go Badgers. I was like, that's yeah, Wisconsin. Yeah, that feels right. Minnesota. <laughs> they created a team Wisconsin. name based after what Badgers. they can say. Badgers. All right, so we're not doing great. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Let's get back to money, George. This is terrible. In 2023, an estimated 56.3 million people plan to participate and bet in the bracket contest according to the American Gaming Association. So again, you throw a few bucks in participate with the old co-workers in you the office. You ever do one of those, the old office bracket? Um, no. Thank you for being honest. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that happening at Ramsey. You do like the squares for fun. the football. Yeah, I know, I don't get that either. And Super Bowl, I was like, put a square up. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Brackets are too stressful. I'm like, this I is did like a bracket with my nephew because we're on the trip with the cruises, I said earlier. Like, yep. they're, all, they're all doing it. And it's the best because apparently the people that could actually win don't know anything about basketball. Like, apparently it's so random, right? Because with March Madness, like, these crazy small teams will upset huge teams. So the less you know, I hear, the more advantage you have. Wow. So that, I have a big advantage. You know what that reminds me of is, like, crypto. It's like the stupider you are, the more likely you are to make some money <laughs> accidentally. And then there you go. Just fall into a pile of money. There you go. It's like the lottery. That's what Wonderful. ends up happening. Okay, but the odd in picking a perfect bracket is, are you ready for this? One and more than nine quintillion? That is a nine with 18 zeros after it. That is crazy. So in honor of the big dance, as they call it in the biz, professionally, we've got a money-themed bracket, a little tournament, if you will. So each bracket will start with eight competitors for a total of four matchups. You keeping up? I got it. This is check, sports stuff. Check, Just check, want to make sure some people out there, they don't Go understand how sports. brackets and tournaments work. <laughs> We call them tourneys in the biz as well. <laughs> Brackies for short. 
So producer Skylar is going to announce each matchup. So for example, if the bracket is best fries in the world, she'll give us a list of the fast food chains that made it to the tournament. And then she'll say our first matchup is Chick-fil-A versus Zaxby's. Okay, that's fine. No competition. All right. (laughs) Waffle over crinkle. I love a crinkle. (gasps) Oh, are you waffle? You're a crinkle? (laughs) I think crinkle fries, they're they're nowhere nowhere to be found these days. I mean, you can find them. The grocery store. It's like a national treasure. Wow. All right. (laughs) With a little seasoning on it? Well, we're going to stick to money. We're going to vote on each competitor, and then Skylar will be the tiebreaker in case. Okay, here we go. What we is have it? Differing opinions. All right, let's just so jump right into it. The winner will advance to the next round, and we'll go until we have a winner. Okay. Let's do this. Let's go. The most predatory personal finance products ever made. Finally, oh, a sigh of relief. This is so good. <laughs> we can do this. We can pick a villain for sure yeah, in this so situation. So, Skylar, who made the top eight for most predatory personal finance products ever made? All right, so we have first the HELOC or the home equity line of credit. We have second the ARM or adjustable rate mortgage. Third, the payday loan. Fourth, whole life insurance. Fifth, the car lease. Sixth, cryptocurrency. Seventh, the student loan. And the eighth one is the credit card. Mm. Okay, that's good. Okay, Strong contenders. So in this first round, we've got four matchups. And then we're going to see who makes it to the semifinals, right? All right. Okay, what's, what's our first? first match? Hit us. All right, y'all. Let's talk about the HELOC versus the ARM. Mm. I'm going ARM. Well, we need to explain what these are first. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Okay. The, okay, the Sometimes HELOC. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only professional in this room. <laughs> Oh my god. Carry stop. this podcast stop. on my I, tiny you shoulders. Give me a competition though. I'm going right in. I'm going right in, George. All right. Okay, the HELOC is a home equity line of credit. Yep. And this is where people take equity out of their home, take a loan out on it. So if you have a two hundred thousand dollar house and maybe you put down a down payment, you've been paying on it, and you're halfway through paying it off. So you have a hundred thousand dollars left on the mortgage. That means you have a hundred thousand dollars of equity. Two hundred now granted the house probably went up in value, but we'll keep the math simple. So you could take actually $100,000, take a loan out against your house because there's equity in it and go do what you want with it. I mean, people use HELOCs for everything, usually for home renovations or putting in a pool, usually something to do with the house. Some people use it for- All kinds of things. Anything. I mean, funding kids' college if they don't have the money. So it's basically going backwards and you're you're paying off your house, but you're taking the value of your house and borrowing on it. And it's it's not great. And then the adjustable rate mortgage, this is my basketball hoop. (laughs) And then the adjustable rate mortgage- uh, is where, yeah, the mortgage rate adjusts depending on the market, depending on what the mortgage company wants. Like you have no clue what your interest rate is. So it starts is off lower so dangerous traditionally. Yeah. So it seems good at first, but yeah. then the rate can go up over time depending on what kind of adjustable rate mortgage you have. And so both of these are really risky. So the HELOC is like this credit card attached to your house. Yes. And the adjustable rate mortgage is a variable mortgage that will probably go up over time and both can put you at big risk. Yes. So which one is most predatory? I'm going to go the arm. I'm going HELOC. Wow, really? Yes. Okay. I think the HELOC, like very rarely is anyone making a wise decision with the money from the HELOC. It's like, well, we just want the kitchen renovation and we don't want to wait to save. It's very like lifestyle and consumer driven. The arm is like, I'm just trying to buy a home and I want to do it the right way. And this interest rate is lower, so it's more attractive. But I think the HELOC is a, it's Gosh, a, this is such a more funny predatory game, financial I think product. the opposite. <laughs> to me, a HELOC, again, this is in the good, the positive end if mm-hmm. someone's being, you know, smart with it, which you can't be smart with a HELOC. We hate debt, all things. But they're at least in a, in a perfect world doing something to repair a house. To make the value Repair, go up. Yeah, putting to, the pool in. To go in and, and raise the value of the home. Hope, it would be a hope, right, that they're doing something where an adjustable rate mortgage, I'm like, you could be in trouble. Like, if you're living paycheck to paycheck and your mortgage goes up and you can't afford your house, like, you're you're screwed. Yes. So, like, but that, my feels, thing is, that feels it's more easier. risky. That feels scarier mm-hmm. to me than knowing I'm taking this set amount out, hopefully, to put money back in the house, to redo a kitchen, all of that. And again, you're going to pay it off eventually, which sucks because you're in debt longer. But I don't know. But the HELOC is like a second mortgage. So that makes me more nervous 
And with a HELOC, you can't just like refinance out of it like you can with the adjustable rate mortgage. So that's, that's true. My, you have an out with the adjustable rate. I'm okay. trying to convince Skylar to vote in my direction. I just, yeah. Give me some more. Rachel. This is a funny game. <laughs> <laughs> to, like, it's the nerdiest. <laughs> Play this with your um, friends. Give me a counter argument. Yeah. So I mean, for me, I'm like, it's it's gonna up the value of the house. Mm-hmm. So eventually, most people are not in their house forever. Yeah. And they're eventually gonna sell. And the hope is kitchens and bathrooms is the one place that you put value back in. Mm-hmm. And that's usually where people go and they'll redo stuff. I didn't um, know Rachel was such a fan of the helix. No, I'm not. <laughs> Stop. I feel like I'm a Final counterpoint. But you- if I had to, I would pick, I, if I had to, I would pick that because there's a level of me that knows what's going on. The adjustment rate scares me because if you're one of these families that's living paycheck to paycheck, like 78% of Americans, George. Oh my God. Then, you're, then, you're, then you could be pushed out of your home. Like to me, I'm like, oh my gosh. My final counterpoint, you no, can't. No, you can't do it. You can't Stop. spell HELOC without help. <laughs> Both are terrible. There will be hell like, to pay. <laughs> okay, go, Skylar. It's fine. I'm going to go actually with the arm because I think that. <laughs> yeah, I know. What is this like women supporting women vibe <laughs> you have going no, on here? No, this is not biased because I think that the arm is more predatory because I feel like that more people get into a house that shouldn't. Yes, more likely right. to get at the Skylar, arm. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Rachel, one point. George, zero. <laughs> what's, what's the next match? All right, round one, match two is the payday loan versus whole life insurance. Oh, gosh. More predatory. Oh, man. (laughs) So, okay, let's let's explain what it all is. So payday loan, you basically go get a loan before you're paid. I mean, it really is people that are very struggling. Short-term loan, super high high interest. Crazy high interest rates, like really Like 300%. Like 400%. So crazy. So crazy. They're usually in low-income areas. And you get stuck in a cycle because they can't end up paying it and it sticks them in it and it's just, it's so greedy. It's terrible. I'm like, and these so are truly bad. people that like cannot make ends meet. So yep. they're put in low income areas, people that are truly deeper in debt, in dark situations. Knowing it and being able to charge insane interest because they are being predatory. Predatory. <laughs> so predatory. Oh gosh. Okay. And then whole life insurance is a super high premium permanent life insurance policy that is touted as an investment because there's a portion that's a, a whole a cash mm-hmm. savings account that can build over time. But the ROI on these are so bad, and you are making these salespeople huge a lot commissions. Of money and you're not, yeah. While you pay into it, and they're like, "Well, ten years later, you'll thank me." And it grows so slowly, and the returns are so bad that it is scam and it's level. Convinced a large portion of the population that this is the best way. This is a great investment and insurance where you can get term life insurance. It's way less expensive, and take what you would have paid for a whole life and invest it in the market. On average, 11 percent, even in, in an index fund. And you'd make way more money. So, yeah. like, so the key it's is not, buy term and really invest the difference. Terrible financial product. Whole and life term life is. obviously is for a term, so it's for 15, 20, 25 yep. years. But here's the thing: you don't need life insurance for your whole life because at some point you're going to become self-insured, to where you your investments steps, you're cover debt, you. All the things. Yep. Okay. Which okay. one, George? Oh, I think payday loans. Me too. Like, it hurts my heart. Totally agree with both of you guys. Oh, look okay. at that. <laughs> George, it was Rachel nice wins on, again. It's Stop. nice being on the same team as you again, George. That's right. <laughs> you okay. never choose Ma- me. If this was like match number three, if this was school and you had to choose like who's going to be on your team, you wouldn't pick me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for what financial debate club? <laughs> no, for sport. Okay. Aww. Yes. <laughs> no. You wouldn't pick me either, though. Unless I had a pickleball racket. First of all, thank you <laughs> for ever thinking cool they would that. allow me to be captain to choose the team. Oh, George. It makes me sad. It's you fine. Could. You could. Not mad. <laughs> match three. All right. Round one, match three is the car lease versus cryptocurrency. Oh, oh. which one is more predatory? Okay, so let's explain the car lease. Leasing, it, we say, is the most expensive way to drive a car. This is a glorified rental. Yep. You don't own it. You turn it back in. You make monthly payments. And you're basically prepaying the expected depreciation on that vehicle. Yep. There's a lot of taxes and fees, and you have to keep up with mileage, and you can't have damage. and you have to. It's a lot of headache. And uh, if you don't purchase the car at the end of the lease, then you have to give it back to the dealer. And then you have to turn around and just get to a life of more payments. You have no You've equity. You literally rented a car. Nothing for to show for years. it. Yeah, nothing to show for so it. So buy your cars in cash. Avoid leases. Even if the payment seems lower than it would on a car loan, don't right. like these. Yeah, and then cryptocurrency 
And this was a fad. I feel like it's kind of gone. It feels like it's well, less I, hyped I think up. a lot of the the hyped coins have gone away, and there's a few that are like yeah, Bitcoin and Ethereum. There's a lot of scams in it, but it's around. basically digital currency is what it ends up being. And and I'll say this sitting here, we could look up in 15 years and it's really caught on and it's become a thing, right? Like, but we don't know. And that's the thing is a lot of people cashed out investments that had long-term track records to invest in something new like crypto, thinking it's the next big thing. And the, and it's so, it fluctuates so much on the value of it. And and we always just say like, if you're going to invest in something that doesn't have a long track record, just be be cautious. Make sure you're doing everything else well if you want to put some in and know that it may all be gone, you can do that if that's what you want to. But so many people just went all in on it and we were like red flag. And then because it's digital, so many scams came out oh, of it. A lot so of many people like lost money. It was terrible. Um, okay, so predatory. Lease or crypto? I think as far as predatory financial product go, I'm going to go car leases. Me too, George. I kind of hate that we're on the same team again, but... You hate it? <laughs> I wanted to debate you because I was Wow. Uh, I'm going to say car lease too. It just feel it... Um, anything to do with the car... Some uh, again, like cars an are asset just toys. that's going yes, that's going down. And in value truthfully, and, people have made money through crypto. No one is making money from a car lease. That's right. No, 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 no. So therefore, and the craziest thing is with a car lease, they don't have to disclose the interest rate because it's not yes, technically it's like defined as there. debt by the institutions. Yep. And so they can kind of bake it into your payment and screw you over that way. Yes. So and it's again, extra and and there's this level too um, where people are like, well, I love just to drive a new car. I love to drive a new car. So I'm going to do a car lease and I'll forever just get a new car. When my term's up, I'll lease another one. And and again, it uh, not that driving a new car is bad, but I think it perpetuates this idea of keeping up so much too. That people can get stuck in this like rhythm well, of if you like have a oh, car gosh, lease, you're to- always going to have a car that's less than three years old, even yep. when you shouldn't be driving. That's a right. Car that's that right. Yeah, new. it's like encourages that part. Where we're like, no, like your identity is on your car, and a car lease. And for some people, the motivation can be like, well, I just want to keep driving a new car. You know, so, I like that. I don't like that. Well, uh, we have a winner, Skylar. It's the car, car lease. lease. Love it. Didn't need a tiebreaker there. Do you agree or would you say crypto? Should we debate Skylar? Uh, no, definitely agree. We will fight. <laughs> she says no. I cannot disagree with my elders. Elders? Oh. Uh, How old do you think Rachel is? <laughs> wow, she's only seven years older than you. <laughs> Maybe nine. I don't know. We I'm don't kidding. Know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. Okay, match four. <laughs> All right, round one, match four is yes. the student loan versus the credit card. Oh, Ooh. boy. Oh, boy. This is oh, a tough one. wow. Okay. Well, so we, a student loan. We know what this is, but explain it. Because <laughs> we're so smart. We, we know. We know what it is. This is a loan but for then my, co- my colleague raised will explain this term <laughs> <laughs> to all you commoners out there so watching this. So you're imagine you're a student. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Looking to pursue higher education. <laughs> <laughs> student loan is taking out debt to get a college degree. To go to school, and take out debt with the hope of getting the degree to then make more money when than they need you to pay would it have. back. So it's an investment of your future. So right? people see this as good debt because, like, well, there's ROI here, Rachel. It's an That's investment right. in my future. Yes, or and my for kids most future. people, they're they're borrowing from the government. Some people do private loans, but usually it's the government doing it. And student loan debt now in the U.S. has uh, over one point seven seven trillion dollars, mm-hmm. according to the Federal That's Reserve. Crazy. All right, George, what's a credit card? A credit card, so there's a, it's like a card, <laughs> but it's credit, see? So it's not tied to your bank account. It's tied to the credit card company, and you're promising them, and they're hoping that you pay this off with your own money later on. Yes. Let's say 30 days later. And so they're playing psychological games with your mind through cash back and rewards mm-hmm. and airline miles. And minimum payments, in my and opinion. And minimum payments. Oh, you don't have to pay the full amount. You can just pay just the Just give us 50 just, bucks. Just, just 30, 100 bucks. 35 40 dollars. But we're going to charge you interest on that. Of, on, on average now, 22%, 22%. APR. That's frightening. Crazy. So, so which one is, now student loans mm-hmm. have a lower interest rate. Yes. Still can be high. They can still be, you know, 5 to 10%. Oh, man. Okay, so more predatory. But what's Student more loan. predatory? Oh, my goodness. That's hard. All right, I okay. think I have my answer. Let me you, get mine first so, so that we say it at the right. same time. That's what I was going to say, George. We're so much alike. <laughs> we're BFFs. It's almost like we can 
finish each, each other's sentences. sentences. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hate myself. I have no self-worth. Stop. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm ready. Oh, Three. Wait, wait, wait. I can't remember what I chose. I <laughs> really chose that. Okay, okay. Uh, got it. Okay, here we go. Yep. One. Two, two, three. three. Student, Student loans. loans. <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Oh, man. Okay, I'll give you my reasons why. Uh, as we sit here today, um, I don't know if I can say in complete full confidence that the ROI of getting a degree for college is going to pay off eventually. The tuition rate is insane. Nobody is there telling the schools or regulating tuition. So they're charging as much as they want because the government will still lend it out as much as they want. And yeah, people still buy in this idea <laughs> <laughs> that if I can just get a four-year degree, I'll be fine. And we're just seeing the, we are seeing the market shift so much and really since COVID, but the last like 24 months, more job opportunities are happening with people that don't need a college degree. And they're not, a lot of companies are not, you know, requiring it. So again, we're, we're for education. I'm saving up for my kids' college. Like I do think- you know, if you have the ability to, to pay for it, you know, that's great. But it is not needed. It is not needed and it is not as competitive. I think back 30, 40 years ago, only a select portion like of the population was really even able to go to college, right? So it really like made them stand out. But now because the government is loaning out so much, really anybody can have the ability to go at any level, right? Community college all the way up. So if you can work your way through, get scholarships, do the... Due diligence to not take out loans to go. Again, I'm not like bashing education, but man, they make you believe you can go anywhere and will give you any amount of money at 18 years old. And it's so dangerous. It is so dangerous. That's a good take. I'll just add this. I think with student loans, it's even worse because as a society, we've all agreed that this is an okay debt. Like mm -hmm. credit card debt, we're like, well, you shouldn't carry a balance. With student loans, right. it's almost encouraged. And the guidance counselors and the parents and the colleges are all telling you this is good. Yep. This is good for your future. They're all in cahoots yes. to screw you over. And as we take calls on the Ramsey Show, oh. the people calling in with fifty, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt is overwhelming. Yes. Compared to credit card debt, which most people have 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 is like, that's a lot. Right. Some right. people have even more than that. But I think student loans, because we've made it an okay the debt. The amount is so much. And because of what you were talking about, colleges have raised tuition because they're like, well, people will just take out more loans. Who cares? Yep. That hasn't really happened as much with credit cards. We're not right. seeing prices on everything come up because, well, I'll just put it on no, my No, but card. credit card debt did just hit 1.3 trillion. It's the a, highest it's been. I mean, it it's is astounding. it is a avenue that people- Yeah will bank on. I still think credit cards are dumber, like as far as, a you know, if you're going to choose a debt to go into. Um, but the I think student loans are more side. predatory as an industry. And if you don't believe us, go watch the Borrowed Future documentary that we produced. Yep. It's free on YouTube. Yep, so good. Skylar, you have no say in the matter. We've decided as a group. <laughs> Whatever. All right, we okay. have our four. So what's our bracket? For the semifinal. <laughs> All right, so we have, we're going to do ARM versus payday loan, and then we're going to do car lease versus student loan. Okay, All so right. ARM versus? Yep, so our first one, our first semifinals match one is ARM versus payday loan. Okay, ready, okay. George? One, two, three. Payday, payday loan. loan. All right. <laughs> semifinals match two is car lease versus student loans. Oh. Mm. You got, got your answer? Yeah, I got it. One, two, three. Student, Student loans. loans. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we're at the championship round. Oh, and wow. we have payday loan versus student loans. Oh. Wow. This is a <laughs> tough one. Okay, because the key word here for me on this whole subject, it, maybe my answers would have shifted if it was like the dumbest type sure. of You said the most predatory the personal predatory finance is, is, yeah. is the word we're using. Okay. Um... Let's do it on three again. Wait, I don't know if I'm ready. This is a tough I know, one. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, man. Because one affects more of the population. Yeah. So is that more predatory? Or is it... One goes the, after the least of these, and one is going after the, the, all right, the middle save class. It, save it, save it, ah, save it. What do we do? What do we do, George? All right, I think I, I think, I think I know. I think I know. Okay, here we go. Ready? 
One, two, three. Payday, Payday loans. loans. <laughs> yes! <laughs> wow. I agree. Oh. Because the upside to a student loan is maybe you get a great degree and you go make great money and you live the American dream. And you pay it off and all is Payday well. Payday loans, you get freaking stuck in that cycle of people and it's so hard, so sad. Th- that's where I kept going well, back we, to. Well, we hate payday loans I just kept going back so to like much. charging someone 400% interest, yeah, which means the balance terrible. grows faster than they can pay it. And even though it's a way smaller amount than student loans, they'll never get out of it. And they turn to other kinds of debt to try to pay that off. And that cycle is so much harder to break. It is. Then, you know, the middle class trying to pay off a student Oh, loan. man. George, that was intense. I'm kind of sweating like I play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's as close to as athleticism as Rachel will get today. And me over here, my varsity jacket, I, I got to say. We are really sports heavy. Well, George, whoo, that was a game. It was. But I think it was also, it helped me process my thoughts on the different types it's of debt good. products. That's a, that's a good one for sure. So it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with guilty, guilty as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Skylar, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip. So, Skylar. All right. Have you ever been obsessed with a trend that you now find embarrassing? Oh, wow. This can oh, be anything from, from like the cinnamon challenge to. Who's obsessed with the cinnamon <laughs> challenge? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you. Oh, man. All right. I'm about to say something, and I don't know if I should. Is this a safe place? This is a safe place. Because I may turn back around. I won't judge you personally. (laughs) The Um, listeners may. But do you know what trend? And it's been a few months uh, that I haven't felt as passionate about. Taylor Swift. No. Oh. (laughs) Okay. Conspiracy theories. <laughs> You're embarrassed that I'm not been as passionate. Oh my gosh, about that part of my life as I have been in the past. You're embarrassed at the lack of passion <laughs> and not the fact that you think we didn't land on the moon. Rachel, you have no regrets. <laughs> oh no, I have no regrets that I'm not on the up and up. Like you still I, think we did not land on the moon. Very. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all, let's not get into all of that. She's embarrassed about her lack of... Okay. But um, that's it. I was on a trend of the conspiracy theory trends very heavily, <laughs> and I embarrassed to say that I'm not anymore. Oh, oh, it's to be embarrassed that you were part of it. Yeah. Oh, I got the, <laughs> I got the wrong sentiment of this question. It's like, it's okay. you've ever been obsessed with a trend that you Sorry. now find embarrassing. Like, I as hear, you look uh, back. Stanley Cups. Yeah. Silly, never drink out okay. of them anymore. That's a good one. You were obsessed with Stanley Cups? Well, I'm just trying to give you something here, George. It's the end of a long game. I'm tired. I will say, oh <laughs> you used to wear skinny jeans. and I'm not embarrassed by that, though. Then mom jeans came along. And jeans true. with the little frills on them. There may be some clothing. And I was a little offended that you ditched me in the skinny jean gang. Uh, yeah, We had I something going there. I left you. Okay, what about you? I'm not embarrassed about skinny jeans. A trend I was obsessed with. I mean, I used to love Pogs and Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And I look back on that. I'm like, oh, that's what like crypto bros are to me now. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, but you were a child. I was a child. Yeah. But yeah. I'm still like, why was I like slamming Pogs? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what were we doing? Yes, oh my gosh. There's still an embarrassment. And Beanie Babies. Yeah. That was a thing. <laughs> they did have a Camel Beanie Baby that I was into. Of course. As one does. As one is. I don't know that I was ever in a really embarrassing trend. I never got on Jinkos, the, the, those jeans. Like my buddies had them. <laughs> Jinkos. You know? Yes. Um, I mean, cargo shorts. I had the zip off, you know, oh, cargo classic. pants that turned yes. into shorts. Yes. That was a option. trend I was very passionate about. My brother about. wore those. I just came up with it. This one's even worse. Okay, go. Satchels. Like, <laughs> like a man... <laughs> Like not like a like a not a, a for, yes. messenger bag. I'm talking about. I would Satchel. go to Goodwill. I would find an old canteen. I would take the canteen out and just use the pouch as I took a tiny purse. <laughs> and in hindsight, I was like Peter Pan minus any magic. <laughs> And how would it, like, you would think, like, what does he have in this? Like, maybe he has, like, cool tools. Like, like a knife, thin. like a pocket knife or something. I carry chapstick. <laughs> you know what I mean? I carry, like, Bath and Body Works antimicrobial oh hand sanitizer. <laughs> Some 
aqua for for the for the knuckles and the so looking the back there's photos of me with my like man satchel <laughs> that I thought was like I was like I'm a boy scout from the so 1940s cool. so embarrassing you you don't know that it was ever a trend didn't start it but oh my gosh. there I am You're that's both funny guilty, guilty. so guilty are. so guilty oh my gosh that's funny oh all right who finished it whoa yeah you did well yeah that was fantastic okay Great what, would you give, what would you give the rating 10 out of 10 for this mocktail. Genuinely, I, that could replace a margarita. If you were at a Mexican restaurant and you didn't want to drink, but you're like, I want a fun drink though. Like I want a good mocktail. I would do that because it's what? Great. Well, tell us what's in it. Here's what's in the grapefruit jalapeno mocktail. It is grapefruit juice. Yeah. Club soda for yeah. a little fizz. Jalapeno, fresh, and lime juice. Okay. So you basically have- Ibu made this and- I'm not kidding. I it's I like a virgin order, margarita. I would, I would order that at a restaurant. It's like grape juice, a little bit of club soda, some lime, and jalapenos. And you'll never guess the cost. Okay. I mean, I'm gonna go. You said that, so it must be low. A dollar twenty-five. Ninety cents. No way. Less yeah. than a buck. Love it even more. So, and I do think <laughs> if you wanted to spice it up for an adult beverage, adding a shot of tequila would make this a, yeah. a win. All right. <laughs> it's closing time. Probably for if, the best. If you loved this episode, <laughs> make sure to share it, I think. <laughs> you want to share this episode with your friends and family. Did they spike Rachel's? And uh, yeah, leave a uh, review. Leave a review. Subscribe. <laughs> Dude, okay. Oh, let's do a March Madness real quick. Should they subscribe or leave a review? Ready, set, wait, one, two, three. Girl. Are you counting up or down? Just choose. <laughs> oh, hold on. I gotta think of which one I want to pick. One, two, three. Leave review. a review. More because we can read us. the reviews. I, I can't right. read your subscribe. <laughs> but you know what? Do both. Be a good person. Yeah. Why leave a review but not subscribe? Share the episode, people you love, you guys. Thanks so much for listening. And we'll see you next Thursday on an all new episode of Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour.